Hey guys, so today I decided that I'm gonna um, tell you my student loan debt story so you can kind of see what motivated me to really start Repayable, put the website together, blog about student loan debt, and ultimately to write a book on the topic. Um, so my story starts with a little bit of my history. So I'm from a working class family. My mom and dad have worked incredibly hard their entire lives and they impressed that work ethic on me. Thank you so much, mom and dad. That work ethic has gotten me through a lot. Um, and they really always have stressed the importance of education, even though neither of them has a college degree. So to me, going to college was a logical step and it seemed like the way that I could find myself a white collar job that paid my bills in a way um, that I didn't have to worry about money for um, the rest of my life, I thought. Um, so I picked to become a pharmacist and started going to school. And while I was in school, it was a competitive program and uh, I actually worked multiple part-time jobs during the course of my education just so that I could um, pay all my bills like rent and all, you know, food, all the cost of living type stuff. And um, despite working multiple jobs, sometimes up to 30 hours a week, I actually graduated with $128,000 in student loan debt. And then I did a year of pharmacy residency and that 128 turned into 132, um, despite the fact that I had paid $6,000 during residency. Um, and that kind of stung, but you know, in the end I was making good money and so when I finally became a pharmacist, I was really excited that it was time to tackle my debt and I started making aggressive payments. Um, and as I paid, I noticed that despite making pretty aggressive payments, I mean two payments a month, one is my you know, 10 year repayment plan payment and then the, the other one was just extra, and despite that, I really wasn't making very much progress and I found that pretty frustrating and I knew it was because of the 6.8% interest rate. Um, but my wake up call didn't really come until I was filing my 2015 taxes. And in 2015, I went to um, type into the um, interest paid on student loan debt box, um, my 13,800 some dollars of interest I had paid on my student loans and I hit enter and a message came up. And I was like, huh, I didn't see this last year. And essentially the message told me that I made too much income as an individual to qualify for the tax deduction. And at that point in time, I almost lost it because it really felt like the government was taking my money twice. Not only were they already gouging me on interest, but they were also um, not allowing me to deduct the measly $2,500 in interest, even though I had paid almost $14,000. So it really felt like the government was double dipping and it pissed me off. So I was like, well, what, what can I do about it? Can I change the tax code? Pfft, no. <laughs> Turns out that's kind of hard to do. So obviously that wasn't the answer. But then I started to wonder, well, can I change my interest rate? And I was like, I don't know. I mean, I've heard of refinancing companies, but it seems kind of sketchy to me. Um, but uh, fortuitously, I guess a few days later, I was listening to a podcast and I heard them talk about SoFi. And then a few days after that, I was listening to a different podcast and heard them mention Ernest. And so... I decided to do some Googling and figure out, I don't know, what refinancing was and if it was legitimate or super sketchy or what. And ultimately, I ended up applying um, with both SoFi and Earnest. They seemed like the most trustworthy companies to me and with sort of the best borrower benefits. And so I applied with both of them. Earnest gave me the best rate. And so I refinanced with them for an interest rate of 3.36%. So I halved my interest rate, um, which was crazy. And that sort of flipped a switch for me because I could have saved $7,000 in 2015 um, by having half the interest to pay and let alone the amount of interest that was accruing on that $7,000 of principal I didn't pay off. And so I was really frustrated because I felt like I'm smart, I went to pharmacy school, I get money, I was responsible when I was in school, I thought I was doing the best that I could with my finances, but 
The problem was I just didn't know about refinancing. No one had taught me about it. I really didn't even know that I'd be such a good candidate for it. Like, I had no idea. And I started to wonder how many other problems are there out, out there like this for the millions of borrowers? I mean, there's student loan debt's a $1.3 trillion industry. There's no way that there aren't loopholes and hiding places and ways that you can use that money more efficiently. And so for a while, a few months, I just complained about it and mourned the loss of my $7,000. And then I got kind of, you know, fired up and decided like, well, you can tackle student loan debt. You can provide people in your same situation, people who worked hard, who've made good financial decisions, who are really trying to get the most out of their education. You can really um, help them by providing information that they can't easily access. So that's how Repayable was born. It's really there to help you find information um, so you can use your money most efficiently. It's not all about being a frugalista and never buying a coffee, that kind of junk. It's really about using your money in the most efficient way so you don't even um, really notice a ton of a difference and um, you can get rid of your student loan debt. So I hope you guys enjoyed my story. Thanks for listening.